and don't plan on it. But I see him do it with the watches, you know. Repeat after me. You're getting very sleepy. So here's, here, Satan has this sway. And believe me, folks, Satan knows his time is short. He, in the Old Testament times, his main mission was to stop the Messiah from coming. That was his mission. He wanted to stop the Messiah from coming because he knew that in the garden uh, that the, the seed of the woman was going to be that enmity that was going to be his, his demise. Okay? So here, in the, here, the serpent, the devil, Satan, he deceives the whole world. This is, a, this is something that's been going on. Now as believers, what does Satan want to do in our life? He wants to destroy us, destroy our testimony, right? He wants to make us useless for the kingdom of God. That's what he wants to do. But he's got the whole world under his sway. Now, you know, he's also called the God of this world, little g. And he's also called the prince of the power of the air. You know? So... Now we talk about the world, the world system. Now God so loved the world. But here's this world system that's being, believe me, it's, it's a setup that's occurring. It's a slow, you ever heard the thing about the boiling water? If you throw a frog in, bam, he'll bounce out. But if you put him in there and heat it up slowly, he'll boil to death. Well, you know, what we're in is we're in a contest that's, that's the, the nations are being set up to be deceived even greater. You might think, man, how could that happen? We, we know too much about the Bible. It's going to happen. It's going to get to the place where people are willing, will be willing to get a mark on their, on their hand or their head. They're, they're going to accept it. They're going to be so deluded and deceived that they're going to accept it. And, and, and the, the Bible prophecy will just be carried out just step by step. And so what's happening now is we are being desensitized as nations. That's right. You know? Think about the billboards as you go down the street. They're filth. Right. Think about what's on TV. It's filth. That's right. Of course, there is something on HBO that I would really like to watch tonight. Has anybody got HBO? <laughs> that, that army movie? If you, if, you, if you do, see me afterwards. I'd really like the Pacific. Yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get off on that. Um, <laughs> But it's, it's a setup. It's to get you to the place where you, you're numb. That's right. You, you've been... Think about, think about, just think about homosexuality, how, much, how prevalent it is on TV. Yes. Main, main characters in, in sitcoms and movies are, are, are homosexuals. Right? right? Things that... Now, I, I chose that because things that we would dare not even... That thought about, you know, 20 years ago or so are just rampant now. Think about uh, j just going in the grocery store, leaving the grocery store, the vulgarity that's out there. This world is a pitiful place. Amen. You know why? Because it's under the, it's under the sway of the wicked one. Mm -hmm. You know? We are present day Sodom and Gomorrah. That's you know, the, the, the nation. You know, in, in Revelation it talks about Jerusalem. You know, how it's going to be under attack. How it's in Babylon, how it's going to be a type of Sodom and Gomorrah. All these things. And so, God always has His remnant, though. God has a lot, doesn't He? Yes. You know, as much as we can say about Lot, making bad choices, this and that. You know, Lot, uh, he was a righteous man. He had righteousness. And his soul was vexed day by day because of their wickedness. Have, have, has your soul ever been vexed before because of what you see happening? Right, Keely? You wanted to get out of that, right? She wanted to get out of that environment. And so, um, he deceives the whole world and he was cast out to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Now, let's keep going here. Um, let's go to, to chapter 13, the next chapter. Uh, is that the one I want to go to? Yeah. 
and I'd like to read more, but I want to get to the point that I want to speak. Verse 11, I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. He's like a lamb. There's part of the deception, isn't it? Who's, who's our lamb? It's Jesus. Behold, the lamb of God. So here's a lamb. He, he looks like a lamb. Um, two, two horns like a lamb. Uh, not that he looks like one, but he had two horns, excuse me, like a lamb. Uh, but he spake as a dragon. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him and caused all the earth and them which dwell in to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he does great wonders so that makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Man, fire coming down from heaven. We've heard of that before, right? That's Old Testament stuff. Right? Remember the Baal? And Elijah, fire came down from heaven. And a couple of times you see fire coming down. Solomon, when he dedicated the temple. And here, here's the counterfeiter. Right? The second beast. Uh, the first beast was what we would call the Antichrist. That was the first part of chapter 13. This is another beast. And he's like him. He's like has power like him. What we would call a false prophet. Because he's going to get people to look to the beast. That's what his... Uh, that's what he desires. Verse 13, sorry, 14. And what's he do? He deceives them. 